All right, so welcome to the platform meeting. It's September 26. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Go September 26. Yeah. Right now, birthday, 75. <laughs> the quarter is almost over. Um, and last week we talked about uh, Q4, the Q4 roadmap, and we had a preliminary plan. Uh, in the meantime, um, I, I shared that with the rest of the team and um, got feedback on it. Uh, so what I can tell you today is that uh, the roadmap, as we have it, um, un unless there are any, there is any more feedback uh, today, we can actually consider that final. Um, I'm very happy about that, that we got there um, before the quarter started. <laughs> uh, so uh, we can go through the uh, Q4 goals one more time um, and make sure that everybody is uh, on the same page what they mean, why we're doing them. Um, and if you have any feedback, if you want to have um, anything um, after this, please talk to me. Um, nothing that we do is set in stone, uh, but we need some clarity on where we are all are going so that, um, yeah, that we are all on the same page. Uh, Michael, you want to say something? Yeah, a question. So this last month or something, you guys started this thing where you're working on multiple projects at the same time instead of like doing this project, finishing it, doing this project, finishing it. But when I look at that Q4 roadmap, like two of the things look like things that can start mostly right away. And then two of the things look like they need to be designed. Is yeah. that, um, so how, how, what's the idea for working on that? Not that it matters to me, just curious. Yeah, actually that fits very well because um, we have uh, only two and a half developers uh, in the next quarter. So Will is going to work on input. Uh, that means that we have, and Ricky is doing uh, management uh, for the team. So that leaves us with two and a half developers working on uh, Kitsune, uh, which means that when each of them takes one, uh, we have Ricky to fill in the 25% time. Uh, which means that actually we have time to design uh, the items um, on the roadmap before they have to go in. Gotcha. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so also there is no discussion about are we doing it all at the same time because we just don't have that many people. <laughs> right. Uh, so, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, so let's let's take it from, from the top um, very quickly because we've talked about all of these already last uh, last week. So it's just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, the first item, and I'm looking at the Trello board, by the way. Uh, let me also put that into the Udo pad. So oh, actually I did. It is, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, let's take it from the top. Um, Lord, Lord. <laughs> Just a second. Oh, you're waiting for the page to load? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Um, all right. The first item that we have here is uh, what should I be working on next? That is the initiative for localizers. We want to give uh, localizers a good idea when they come to the, when, when they sign up, when they want to localize. We want to give them an easy way to tell what they should be working on next because so far it's been all over the place. They've been working on items that didn't really benefit that many people, neither them nor us. So we want to make it clear very uh, easily to them what they should be working on next, what would have the biggest impact, what would make the most sense. Um, that's the one part. And then for established uh, localizers, the local leaders, we want to uh, give them a sense of urgency for what they should be doing next, which is generally reviews. Um, so we are going to make it uh, more um, the, the reviews more accessible, uh, better visible, what, the, what reviews they should be working on. Um, that is the initiative for uh, localizers. Um, that's the first one. And yeah, I mean, we can uh, take questions after each one, but yeah, if there are any. If not, we can move on. The second one that we have is uh, increasing the soft rate in the forums, and this is about getting the low-hanging fruits implemented. Uh, as, a, as a result from the uh, report that we did, we know uh, where we have to, uh, what we have to work on uh, to get our uh, soft rate to about 35%. And 
and that is what we are shooting for in this quarter. So in this quarter, we are trying to answer the question for localizers, uh, what, what needs my attention at this point? Unfortunately, currently in the forum, it's not that clear. So we end up uh, dropping the ball on about 7% of the uh, threats, and that is really bad. Um, so there are lots of cases where we don't know what's going on, but in that case, we do. So it's really an objective uh, to get that, those cases down to zero um, so that we never drop the ball on the user. And one way to do that is to tell people what needs attention now. Um, so that's, that's going to be the main goal of uh, this quarter for increasing the soft rate in the forums. Um, then we have the product and version detection uh, for the ASCII question flow and the KB. This is about extending our show for code uh, to include uh, mobile, desktop, and Firefox OS. Um, and also to uh, get the version information into the forum so that users don't have to, our contributors don't have to ask each time what Firefox OS version uh, a user is using. Uh, so it's making life easier for them. That also allows us to be more targeted when we uh, give answers because it's really hard for a user to figure out what version they're using. It's not really apparent to them. Um, yeah. That is the product and version detection for ask a question from the KB. Uh, Kadir? Yes. Is part part of this is part of this the API thing? Is that like a later follow on? How does that work? So yeah, the, the API thing is actually uh, one of the risks here because we don't know exactly how far we can go with this without the API. So, or, or rather this way. We know exactly how far we can go without the API. What we don't know is whether we will get the API in this quarter or not, because a lot of people are pushing on that one, but it's not dependent on us. Right now, it's going through security reviews, so it's other teams that are doing this. Oh, they're security and, reviewing it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so that it's moving on, uh, but the API part is totally out of our hands. Um, so committing to any part regarding the API is going to be really tricky. Um, what we can do, though, and what's not affected by uh, the API at all, we're getting the version information uh, from Firefox OS. So we can detect something as Firefox OS, and we can detect the version of the, uh, of the OS. That's good enough uh, to get the show for code uh, in there, yep. because that's been what we've been doing for other products as well. We've only been looking at the, um, uh, or mostly looking at the version. Uh, so that works for us. When we do Android, we also just look at the version number. Um, so that's going to be okay. What we don't know about and what we would actually like to get is, on one hand, um, the uh, model, the device model, uh, because there can be differences between the devices. Um, yeah. And we, at this point, where we are still, where we still have a few devices, it still makes sense to actually address them individually. Maybe later on, if we have like dozens and dozens of devices, it might get harder to actually do something about that. But right now, it makes sense. Um, so that's what we are shooting for, but that's part of the API. So um, we, we are dependent on that. There, there is another part of this uh, where we want to have more information from the API, like the crash IDs, uh, but that's even further out because even if we get the API implemented as it is today, um, that only includes the about support information. Um, so we would have to uh, include the uh, crash IDs in the about support or get that individually and that, that's a more involved project, so it's definitely out of scope for, for this quarter. Cool. All right. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next one. It's the actionable KB dashboard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so. Much more exciting than API. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you, you see it that way. Um, because <laughs> All right. I'm also really excited about this one. Um, it's it's one of the uh, one of the views. The KB dashboard is one of the views that we've been living with for quite some time. Even though uh, it's the, the situation that we have today is nothing like the situation that we had three years ago, or two years ago. Uh, so today we have three more products. Uh, we have uh, hundreds of new articles in the K in the KB, and we are still using the same uh, dashboard to manage them. And it's become apparent and it's become clear that actually. That's not the most efficient way to do, to do it. So the content editors and content managers are wasting a lot of time fig figuring things out uh, with, with uh, data that we could actually present them um, 
in a more accessible and in a more um, in, a, in an easier way essentially to make their workflows um, easier to accomplish. We know about the workflows, so you can also go in there and you can see the plans already. So we know what workflows we have. What we are working on now is to figure out how exactly can we support those workflows. Um, yeah, and that is the that is the actionable KV dashboard. Uh, any questions about any of these or any comments, feedback? All right. So I'm really happy to say that uh, we have a Q4 roadmap, and I'm really excited about this. This is going to push us forward in lots of, lots of areas, on the English content side, but also for localization and in the forums. Um, so this is going to be a really nice push of the platform and of the content. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Woo! Let's hear cool. it for the roadmap. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Q4 roadmap. Well, actually, <laughs> The show for or the API is super exciting because then we get our users what they want. So if we can get both those things, an actionable KB dashboard and the show for slash API slash whatever it turns into, that's a super win quarter. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm really happy about how that turned out. Um, one more caveat, we are waiting for the uh, dev team because they are now in their virtual work week. Uh, they might come <laughs> back with things that might also make sense to implement in the fourth quarter. But so far, I would say this is our final roadmap as it is. OK. Uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, put up a blog post about this as well um, and uh, make sure that everybody uh, also in the forums knows about this, everybody who doesn't watch these meetings and doesn't participate in these meetings uh, knows about it. And then we can move on. All right. Next thing I'm seeing here is persona status. Uh, so yeah, uh, people who participated last week, you know that we actually wanted to launch with persona last week, but there was a last minute bug in the persona, um, in persona that prevented us, prevented us from doing that. In the meantime, Ricky found a workaround for that. Um, so while the persona team is going to fix that bug, uh, we can work around that. However, testing all those paths. Since then, uh, we bumped into a number of issues. So as we are bumping into those issues, um, uh, the dev team is trying to work around them or fix them if, if it's a problem on our side. Um, but uh, from, from our testing so far, we also know that some of the things uh, are going to be issues. Particularly, um, there is already one case where we know that it's not going to work. It's iOS 7 which is by now on half of all the iOS devices, um, it is conceptually a problem with Persona uh, because third party uh, cookies are being blocked. So the Persona team is on it. They're working on it. But we don't have an ETA yet. So we don't know whether they're going to fix it or not. For us, that's not necessarily a blocker because only a small, a very, very small part of our users on, are on iOS devices. Um, that's the nature of our site. And of course, we are still working. Like the site still works for iOS users. It's just that if you want to actually uh, sign up um, or sign in, that's where you uh, run into issues. Um, still, we would be happy if that wasn't the case, but uh, the personal team is on it. Um, there are, however, a few cases uh, where we have run into issues. So we are testing them still. And because we really want to be sure whether this is the right thing for us to do or not, uh, we are going to have a go and or no go meeting uh, tomorrow with stakeholders uh, to decide if this is the right thing for us to do at this moment. Uh, so the question is not whether we are going to switch to persona or not. Uh, the question is whether we want to do it at this point, or whether it makes sense to um, to test those uh, paths even more um, and to give give more feedback to the persona team so that they can. Um, fix issues that we see, um, or for us, the time to work around those issues. Um, we have an Etherpad. There are still a few white uh, blank uh, passes that nobody has tested yet. I'm still going through them with all the devices that I had. But if you want to help, if you want to participate in this, please go to the Etherpad and just check one of the passes out. It shouldn't take you longer than five minutes, because in that case, that's an issue already. Uh, so if, if uh, 
uh, signing up to one of those cases takes you longer than that, also uh, let us know in the Etherpad. Um, hey, I have a question. Yeah. So you said uh, Sumo Dev fixed some things. So, but mm -hmm. I don't see on the Etherpad like where it's noted if they fix something. So, how, like I don't know if I should retest or, um, or am I just missing that? The thing is that uh, we have to test to know whether it's actually fixed or not. Uh, like for example, uh, from the mo for some things we actually know that, so, so we should put them in there. Like the Get Involved pages on mobile, they were uh, redirecting to the desktop page, so right. uh, that is fixed, and um, that should be working uh, fine. Um, but but some of the other things we just have to test them again to see if they are fixed or not. Uh, so. Um, yeah, I mean that's 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 the only way to actually tell. Right. But I mean, I, I guess what I'm saying is like, so if you fixed, for instance, the the mobile get involved page, wherever mm -hmm. that was a problem, because I that was that was one of the problems I ran into. Yeah, you I should know. Mm -hmm. Note it there, like this should be fixed now. You might want to test it again, or or we know oh, it's yes. fixed. There's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so let me go through that and make sure that we do have that. And Ricky, if you have that information, because you've, I guess, fixed most of them, uh, you can put that into the Etherpad too, so we know which ones to fix again, uh, to test again. Also, I wonder how much of this has to do with the actual phone, or I didn't know if something had to do with the phone, or did they fix something in between the times I tested? Like, I, for instance. If you look on yeah. that Etherpad, like line 196, I tried this one scenario, and it was just horrible. But that was with 1.2 on the Geek's phone. And then later in the day, I tried it with 1.1 on the Unagi and had no problems. And I don't know if it was, is it a difference in the phone, or did you fix something in between? Right. So in that case, actually, we didn't fix anything in between. LDAP uh, was supposed to just work. Okay. Um, it worked for me. It didn't work for you on that phone, and then it worked for you on another phone. So right. that, to me, um, is an indicator that there is something with either 1.2 or Geek's phone. Or Geek's phone. Uh, like I, mean, I couldn't be... tap the link. That was like a hard. That was one of the blockers. Like a, like clicking, trying to tap the link wasn't working. So I didn't take that too seriously because 1.2 is still not final. And when I was using it on my Geeks phone, all on other sites, on established sites, I have the same problem. Okay. Clicking links is really an issue um, with one or two on the Geeks phone, and it's hard to tell whether that is because one or two, or because of what Geeks the phone is doing, because they are not using the actual, um, they are not using our night lease. They are okay. using their own night lease, uh, so it's it's totally unclear. Um, I would actually not test with the Geeks phone. I would test yeah, with the official phones. That makes more sense, especially in 1.1, because that's the thing going out to people soon. Right. Yeah, yeah. if you have a 1.1 phone, unfortunately, I, I, I don't get it. Mine, mine is still on 1.0, and uh, it's not updating. Uh, but, but if you have a 1.1 phone, um, that, that's one of the things that I can't test, so um, okay. it's also very much appreciated. Good to know. And I'll use uh, on top of that, I'm also I'm also using the uh, simulator to create to create videos for uh, how the workflows are looking right now, so that we can share that with the Persona team and see if that's actually what it is supposed to be. Um, so that's also what we're going to share with them. What I'm going to share with the, their UX lead, um, cool. because unfortunately there is no at this at this point at least we don't have a reference that we can test again. So Again, so unfortunately, there's nothing that you can go to and say, I'm testing this on my phone. It's working on that side. I come to the Sumo site. I'm testing it here, and it looks different, or it looks the same. Right. Unfortunately, there is no such reference. So we, we have to work with the Persona team on figuring out if that is actually an ex intended uh, interaction or if that is uh, a problem that we have to fix. Ricky, you want to add something to that? Um, no, it's good. Okay. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, so like I said, uh, we need to keep testing this uh, and make sure that we know exactly where we are standing with that. Uh, but also on Friday, we are going to have the GoNovo meeting uh, with the stakeholders, and then we will make the decision about this. Um, but it will not be online before Monday. Um, so even if you have the Go decision, we will uh, go online with this on Monday. Um, so not during the weekend. Uh, just to be Yeah, that's the status update for for personal. Okay. Um, other things uh, we might want to be talking about. Uh, so, status updates. No. Yes, Michael. Yeah. Well, um, I know uh, we were talking about this over email, but here I'll put this link that Ebay sent this morning uh, over email. This was uh, the Kindle thing. Oh, that's freaking uh, awesome. This is a demonstration, like an actual live demonstration of their the Mayday button where you uh, talk to tech support on your tablet. And is it can, little uh, fairies in Ireland that you talk to? Yeah. Oh. And they can, <laughs> <laughs> they, can uh, they can draw on the screen and, and <laughs> stuff like that uh, to show you uh, things. So, I mean, I know this is far fetched for us, but but you know we were talking in our uh, in our meeting in Paris really about um, the possibility of you know is, is it crazy to to consider things like phone support at some time um, um, with Web RTC? I mean, kind of almost out of the box, you might even be able to do something something like this. You could integrate WebRTC into Sumo. Um, yeah. um, you know, I don't know. Is it crazy? Like it would, call, it would take a lot of people, right? You know, we, I just we are actually building the technologies cool. for this. Like there is TogetherJS, uh, when you can just click a link and then you are using the same site. You can watch the other person as, uh, as he or she is using the site on your computer. Uh, and you don't need to uh, install anything for that. Um, wow. It goes into that direction. And WebRTC, as you mentioned, for peer-to-peer -peer video. The technological side, I think, I, I think Levi said that too, is uh, it's probably the, the smaller issue. <laughs> right, right. The bigger it's issue is it would totally be like the manpower to do it, right? I, I, I did. I, I commented on on this particular thing on the on the email, but because that that was only with the people in the sumo alias, I think. Uh, we tried something very similar in a previous company with Log Me In. Log Me In is is fairly famous because it it has these capabilities for computers. Uh, it basically allows you to take over somebody's computer remotely after they gave you permission. That is basically this same technology. But LogMeIn has also the same technology for iOS, Android, and so on and so forth. So you basically can take over a smartphone and a ta or a tablet. So technology-wise, you can just pay LogMeIn for a license, and it's, it's almost the same experience. It's not even is not even as deeply integrated as what Amazon has done in their Mojito OS. I love the name, by the way. <laughs> uh, Mo Mojito OS? I thought, yeah. I thought it was Fire OS. It's Fire OS version Mojito. <laughs> <laughs> the next, the next uh, one is like, uh, is going to be Margarita or something. <laughs> Margarita. Oh, Caipirinha. Caipirinha. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, the main challenge, so there, there are two challenges in this in integration. One is the, the manpower that you need for, for basically answering every single request in 15 seconds or less. That's their promise. Uh, I mean, you need a pretty inefficient sit uh, situation to, to have this up and running because everyone needs to have a quiet area, a nice background, I don't really know how they how they are doing it, but imagine if they're sell, selling 
let's say, even if it's half a million or one million devices, uh, the first couple of weeks, people are gonna click in that button compulsively. It's like, oh, I wanna <laughs> chat with this. Uh, beyond that, I think that it will fade out and the novelty will expire. But again, it's the whole element of getting used to this type of support because it's really freaky. For us, it will be, for the more tech savvy people, it's fairly cool because we value and appreciate what, what's going on. Uh, for some somebody who is not as familiar with it, it could become something freaky to to deal with somebody taking over your device. And that's what we observe in, in the previous experiment that we did. People will call and they will say, oh yeah, sure, just take over my device. And then when they were looking at the, staring at the, at the device while they were seeing how things were uh, happening, uh, they didn't like it. Uh, hmm. So customer satisfaction wasn't as great even. Uh, wow. Again, I think that they are, because how much it's being promoted, I think that they are doing it more for the, we are becoming more like Zappos and we want to give you like 24 seven premium over the top support, even when it's not needed. Uh, we're going to help you with anything you need. <laughs> right, I think yeah, it, I mean, it, it could also be, like that's Apple's like philosophy. That. You you Apple, can call. Right? Sorry. Yeah, no, no, I was going to make that comparison. Like Apple, you could take it to the store. They're like, hell, now just press a button on the Kindle. Right. So, so um, it could also be that I mean, in the advertising for that, it's a young and um, it, it, it's a young guy who, who actually knows tech. So that's totally it's pretty far fetched. But I can imagine that uh, a lot of the elderly uh, people. They will actually, they would like someone to do that for them, um, especially if you don't want to learn how to do something. Um, then just pressing a button and something happening. I mean, that's that's the phone calls that we have all the time from family members, right? It's not my 15-year-old uh, nephew who calls calls me and asks me tech support questions. <laughs> uh, it's been my parents, but not since they have. Uh, so, but it's them who call uh, and, and, and want, want you to help them and actually, if possible, take over and just do it. The question so, is, Kadir, yes, they, I think that elderly are super comfortable with people they know, but just press a button and, and suddenly some, some random guy shows up in your computer and starts doing things in your, in your tablet. No, it's support fairy. It's not a random guy. It's yeah, always going like, to be girls. I mean, the advertising made that clear, right? It's always <laughs> going to be girls. Oh, in the demo, it's a guy. In the demo, it's a guy. In their advertising, it's like a young, it's a young. Oh, woman. okay. I only, I only look okay. at the advertising. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the ads are all girls. <laughs> and anyhow, I, I want to remember that there a similar service was offered to us too by because uh, the log me in experiment was without video and I think I remember that there was something uh, a company in Spain that was specialized in doing something similar with sales pitches so usual form where you add yeah I'm interested in more information and suddenly these guys uh, give you a, a video chat uh, call like minutes later uh, where they they explain to you the, what what's going on, what the product is about, it's like a, a sales call but over video. So I'm pretty sure that if we were interested in doing something like this, they, uh, there are capabilities out there that would enable us to do it without uh, internalizing all the operation. But it must be so expensive to do it. Are they doing it for every, I mean, I, 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 uh, I think I remember they said they are doing it only for a certain type of uh, the pet, right? Yeah, it's not uh, every single one. It's these new ones. It's like the two yeah. new devices or something. Uh, yeah, not for all Kindles, right? Only the Kindle Fire XDs or something? Right. H, HDX or something like that. Yeah, whatever. Okay. It could be that they are. Yeah. On the other hand, I mean, Amazon is already like uh, tech support or general support for them is nothing new. They are huge in that area. 
they already have the whole, um, like everything you need for that actually. And instead of taking calls, the people will now mm -hmm. take video calls, so to say. And right. it might even be faster because before they needed to tell them on the phone, please press this thing or are you there? <laughs> and now, now uh, they can do it themselves. It's probably, it might even save them money. I don't know. I have no idea, but it might even save them money. That's true. That's, that's, that's a really good observation. Probably one of these calls is faster to, to, to close. Right. In, in the mean, other hand, what, what, yeah. what I'm saying is that the setup is different. A call yeah. center, it's just a cubicle next to a cubicle. Uh, here, you need to have a, a, a little bit more quiet environment, I think. And I a nicer because... background. I mean, you cannot see people walking behind you and stuff like that. Yeah, the background. Yeah. I mean, the audio yeah. should be the same as a call center, but the the background is definitely a thing, right? People have to be a the little guy, bit more pre presentable. The the guy on the demo, I think that he wasn't using a, a headset. Maybe he wasn't. You couldn't see it. But it was. Anyway, well, I I mean, I think I mean, you know, not like we're gonna do something about this uh, tomorrow. But um, um, to me, uh, uh, given a choice between uh, something like uh, a phone or a live chat, this seems much more attractive. I mean, it, it yeah, solves also the, the problem of like one of the hardest things, and it's hard in the forum too, right? When someone is trying to describe in words something that they don't have the words for. You know, um, yeah. or when you're trying to describe an action for someone to take and and they, you know, you you not sharing the same vocabulary. It's much easier to point at something and say this thing. <laughs> Click it, you know. Yeah. No, it will be really cool to see how that pans out for them. WebRTC would enable us to do something like this. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. something we need to consider in the future when we have WebRTC to actually debug on all browsers. Yeah, I mean that's what I mean. I'm just like something to keep on the radar to think about, you know. Totally, it's great to bring it up and have this chat. I think. Yeah, we we should really uh, watch that closely. How it is going for them? That will be really interesting. Oh yeah, that was my other. Also, thing. the international part of it. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yes, that's true. Does anyone know anybody that works? Uh, especially like at Amazon customer support. We should ask around inside Mozilla if anyone has anyone that uh, friends that work there, if we could ever get some information about about it. Yeah, maybe Patrick, he lives in Seattle. Don't, doesn't everybody in Seattle know somebody who works in Amazon? <laughs> oh, is that where their head, LB, actually. Is that where their headquarters? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's I'm Microsoft and Amazon. Uh, Juggernaut. I have a former colleague who works on the, on the community side of Amazon. Uh, I'm not sure if she has the knowledge about this. I can try to ping her. And, but what do we want to know? They're, they're probably super duper uh, cautious about sharing any type yeah. of... Uh, well, I'd love to know the, the things, estimation like, about the operation and the volume of the because I think that that's the that's the meaty part, like what's exactly uh, going on in the back uh, on the back end of this. How yeah. many people do they How have does it work? doing this? Right. How does it is, really work in the back? Is it is it actually? Okay. I guess I mean, it's, it must make some sense financially, but is it super expensive or, or are they cutting costs some way? Like they they're taking mm -hmm. advantage of something to to it's actually cheaper. Um, yeah, what is you know this isn't going to this isn't going to stay um, secret for a long time because people who work there will be talking about it, um, at least about their own experience, and then you can tell whether this is actually what well, how the success rate of this is. Right. And that's the important part, right? You want to have higher satisfaction. It's unclear whether this will actually give it to them. We will see. Yep. I think this is really exciting. Yeah. It's yet another possible WebRTC thing that we could exploit or exploit or make our user experience even better in the future. Okay. Uh, 
you guys want to move on to the next topic? Yeah. Okay, so the next one is um, it's Michael. Oh, that's just status updates. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, so we don't talk about Yeah, I mean, just I would say what it says right there. Okay, done. Okay, so then it's for me. Uh, action items is for me. Clear to share Q4 roadmap. Um, also, one note: next week we won't have the uh, have this meeting because it's the summit. So we are going to skip over this one and, and have hopefully our meeting. see everybody who would actually listen to this go to this meeting anyway. Yes, we can have a platform meeting at the summit actually. <laughs> We so won't, we but I mean, we could, yeah. We won't, but we, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, but we will have another platform meeting again in uh, October. Uh, I think it's the 10th of October. 10th, yeah. Should check that out. It's the 10th of October. Um, yeah, uh, do we have anything else that we want to talk about in this uh, platform meeting? If not, 20 minutes of your life. Awesome. We're getting it back. How cool is that? <laughs> and, uh, and I'd like to talk uh, afterwards about your bad jack shaving with Kadir and Ricky. But we can stop All right, it. Cool. All righty. Okay. All right. Ciao. Thank you. Bye. Till the next time. Have fun, okay, guys. Ricky and Kadir, can we stay on?